So we got most of the bed frame in place. This was an absolute pain in the ass. Um, so we'll have a bench there, a bench there, and then this will sit flush in with the, we're going to ply the front and then clad it so it all blends in nicely. Um, but just the slightest millimetres out and it just messes around with the whole thing. So it's probably took us a good three hours. Um, but yeah, it's a start. It feels like it's all slowly coming together. Okay. So the plan for tonight is just to get the front of the bed frame on, um, hopefully get a cupboard in this area, and try build a bench. Um, we're not really what sure, sure what approach we're going to take just yet, but I'm sure we'll find a way. So yeah, once again unloading the van because we've got nowhere else to work, and then we'll get going. So we've just measured out the gap in the front of the bed that hopefully the desk will then pull out of. Um, so it took a few goes to decide where exactly where we needed it, but fingers crossed, get the jigsaw on, and then yeah, we'll give it a go. <laughs> So I've jigsawed the slot out now, a bit ugly around here because I've got to cut out for the hinges on either side. But this is going to be faced off with cladding, so it's irrelevant anyway. But you've all seen it before, but it's just a slidey out table. That'll sit in there flush once the cladding's on, hide all this nastiness. It'll be good to go. Ready for an IKEA trip? Yeah, we got my wallet and just brought Sparky today. <laughs> it's all I brought. <laughs> You'll have to pay for this run out. The most frustrating thing about having nowhere to work is that every time the rain comes down, everything just comes to a stop. So Scott's in there now, he's doing what he can, but he's cut all the pieces of wood. So once they run out, then that's it, we'll just have to wait for the rain to ease up a little bit. But what, what a nightmare. Where's summer? Typical British weather. So we're going to attempt to put the solar panels on, so we just need to drill the holes for the cables to go through. So I think <laughs> a bit of rust proofing to make sure that it's all sealed properly. No rusting will happen. Uh, in theory. <laughs> Everything works in theory. We thought this would be an easy job, didn't we? Now look at the state of the van. There's only one controversial topic in theory, and that's bit for barriers. But we don't go there. No, nah, don't go there. Everyone's got an opinion. So what we did to get the roof fan sort of template done is draw around it in a cardboard box first rather than going straight in for the kill with um, the fan itself. Yeah, draw on the template around the cardboard box. We're going to then template that up onto the ceiling or the roof, whatever you call it. Um, and then Scott's going to go from the top, drill down, and we can get the square cut out. Hopefully the rain will ease off for a few more hours, but it's all just a bit hit and miss at the minute. Hi, boy. Oh, they're like... So 
sewed the majority of the roof fans in. Um, we're just giving it a quick clean up where the rust paint just caught in it when we were putting through. So how did you install it? Well, templated out on cardboard first. Transferred that onto the roof, drilled all four corners and get the jigsaw blade in. Bought a new metal jigsaw blade rather than using an old tatty wood one. Cut it through, rust proof the edge of the bare metal where we cut through. Put the fan through, use some of this mastic tape there it is, that apparently forms a seal. We'll see, but I didn't trust that fully, so I'll also use some uh, marine grey sealer as well. Uh, so if this leaks, I'll be a bit disappointed. And then we've sealed both the outside and the inside just for better protection. But yeah, we're just giving it a quick clean up now. Then we're going to get it covered from the top just in case it decides to rain again. And then we just need to add the little knobbly attachments. It comes with a remote as well, which is ideal. And it's also rain sensor proof. Rain sensor proof? Whatever that means. And it's got a rain sensor. It's got a rain sensor. It'll close yeah. automatically if it's raining. But it won't matter if it's not sealing <laughs> properly anyway, so yeah. I think the final test, well, the main test will be tonight if it absolutely pours it down. It will, because I'll be throwing a bin bag over it tonight. We might time. come into a wet van in the morning. <laughs> 24 hours to cure. Yeah, we've got quite a lot of done today. We've got these walls all plied, insulated, vapour barriered on both sides. We've got the fan in, and we've just made a bit of a mess, really. Um, but as I said earlier, it's just a case of... When the rain's holding off, we've just got to get as much done as we can. You happy with it? So far. So far, so good. So what's your progress today, Scotty boy? <laughs> Over there making a mess. <laughs> wiring, labelled the wiring up, fan, tested the fan, fan's working. As you can see, we added an LED light strip to test as well, working. So now we know everything's working, we're going to clad all this, box it all in, insulation, etc, etc. Etc, etc. Done. Done, let's go. Insulating the ceiling, then we're going to vapour barrier that, get the rest of the cladding up, and then we can cut holes for... Where the lights are going, the LED strips, maybe some speakers. We'll do speakers. We'll see. Right. So what we've done so far today is 18, 85 nights in the ceiling. Two spotlights in. There's two more spotlights to go in around here and here, just so they line up. They're going to be able to be switched individually. So if we just want these ones on or them ones on, we can do that. Didn't want them all on just in case on a night we only want a couple of them on but we've run out of cladding so now what we're going to do is we put this board in uh, we're going to back one of our kitchen units onto that uh, we're going to get that in and then that's going to give us an idea of how much room we're going to have to build the bulkhead the bulkhead's only going to be coming up to here we want this space open we're going to uh, face all this off cover doors on there we want this open because when we're traveling we're going to be traveling with dave and we want to be able to see and hear Dave in the back and also we can put the windows out here get some cold air flow, air flow coming through as well so sick of time wraps on and uh, next start in this kitchen Right, so this is how high our bulkhead's going to be as I said, we're having a gap so we can see here Dave in the back when we're driving. Uh, I had to cut around this little notch here, a bit of a pain in the ass. But we've only got off cuts left of 12 mil ply, and I'll be perfectly honest, I don't want to spend another 35 pound on one sheet of ply. So, built this little frame, I'm going to add a few more of these cross members, and then we're just going to do patchwork bulkhead. You're not going to see most of it, most of it's going to be covered by our other unit. And the bit that's not covered by the other unit is going to be tiled. We have like a splash bath L shaped tile thing going on. So, yeah, it's a bit cracking. Right, we've done all the other ones the other way. We're swinging this one round simply because we're using offcuts. 
of 12 mil. So if we do it this way, we've got 44 mil. We could do 22 that way, 22 the other way. If our ply come up to, I don't have any. This is 12 mil ply. So we'll be able to do a bit from there to say halfway there, and from halfway there to the top with our off cuts. Ah, all fun and games. The cost of wood is ridiculous. Just look like a fat Buddha sat here screwing in, don't I? <laughs> I do got the gym, I promise. <laughs> Just like takeaways. What's your favourite takeaway? Pamo. People won't know what a Pamo is unless they're from our neck of the woods. I say, say our neck, your neck, not mine. What's a Pamo, Scott? Chicken and cheese. Grilled with any toppings. It's like a pizza, really, but with a chicken base. I'd like to say I dare hang off that, but I won't because I'm 16 still. <laughs> That'd be strong enough for our book, I think. Shall I put another one across here? Unless we can do that in a wanna, because that's going to be in the corner. And not yeah, I don't think we need one there. Right. I can't believe how much we've actually got done today. And the sun has been out all day for once. None of these have gone straight. <laughs> right, today's been a, a busy one. We wanted to get the ceiling finished and all four spotlights in. We wanted to get some overhead storage done. We didn't manage to get that done. We wanted to get half the kitchen built, which we did. We didn't plan on doing the bulkhead, but we've done the majority of the bulkhead so far. Uh, so yeah, it's been a productive day. We didn't get done everything we wanted to get done, but we've got done other things. So that's it for today. I'll, uh, I'll show you exactly what we've got done now. We managed to clad most of the ceiling, but we run out. We have put uh, two LED spots in and they're working perfect. The wires look a mess, but they need tidying up. Once we get the cladding down here, the switches will go in there. This is half of the kitchen. It's pretty big to be fair. Probably too big for a van, but we're gonna have loads of storage in here. We might end up putting uh, sliders that come out in like the tin slider storage. We got the bulkhead. What we wanted to do, uh, gonna be tiling across here once the other units go in. Some doors on there for overhead storage. We'll be able to see through there. I might put some sliders on there with tinted perspex or something. Or it might just be a wood slider. I'm not too sure. We haven't decided yet. But that's what we've got done today. We're going to have a day off tomorrow. And we'll be back at it on Sunday. <laughs>